Nếu không được ngọt bùi Xin đừng gieo cây đắng Nếu không ban vinh quang Xin đừng làm nhục bẩn Nếu không My home is not here on earth But my home is in heaven Where it never can be destroyed You will never be eliminated harassed, molested, or oppressed in any kind, in any way at all. You will live as you, yourself, as in the dream that I have written about in that poem when I was of younger age. I don't feel old. I tell you honestly, I don't feel old. It's just my body sometimes complains because I overuse it. I work day and night sometimes. I don't care about eating, sleeping, unless I truly can wear no more and drop drop to death somewhere on the floor or on the sofa. It doesn't matter. I work because I know if you're happy, I will be happy. If you're in pain, I'll be in pain. I work for myself, but in your name, in the name of God, but truly it's for myself because it's unbearable, all the pain I witness every day, even just from the news, from the screen of the television or my little uh, phone. It is still real to me, and the pain is raw and will never stop until this world becomes a paradise. I mean... Less than the real paradise, perhaps, but why not? I ask God if they want to stay here, why not? If they want to stay in their dream, in the dream state, you know, in the illusion, why not? And let them be. But at least it has to be nice and comfortable, just like a heavenly world. I want to make this world a heaven for you. Those who don't want to go to the real heaven still can enjoy a heavenly life, peaceful life, wonderful life, just like the way I dream in my poem. When I was so desperate, ah, I remember the poem is called Screaming Out Loud. It was in desperation for this world, seeing this world in such a sorrowful state that I wrote that poem. And I want to make that dream come true. Thus, I've been fighting all these decades, with you and without you. I just hope one day, very, very soon, you will help me, fight with me on my side, by my side, so that you will have that dream come true, a heaven on earth, where you could still have everything, but wholesome things, healthy things, saintly things because you be saintly beings who live on this planet as if in heaven. I have sacrificed everything, all my physical magic. For example, like you could fly in the air, traveling by air, not airplane, but yourself in the air, and escape from danger by being invisible and disintegrate your body in times of trouble and reassemble it again somewhere else so that you can escape temporarily. You know, you can walk through walls, through doors, open any locked door of the prison or anything at all when you want to be free. This can make a more convenient life for me, a more comfortable life, but I had to sacrifice all that because I interfere with the world and you're not allowed to use any magical power openly. Sometimes I had to use to some little thing to cure my dog person, but still I had to pay dearly. And even if you want to pay for everything, you can't do it. You're not allowed to. Otherwise, you will be stripped of your title, thrown away from the mission, And God probably will never want to use you again or let you be in existence again. Not to talk about being a master. 
in the initiation time, we have told you how to know which level you are in, in the five levels, what kind of landscape, scenery that you will see inside your vision. And further upward, the near rim. Not the outside things. No, no, nobody can see what you see. And what kind of uh, melody, music, or teaching from God you will hear at what time or stage of your spiritual development. You know all that. So do not try to claim yourself as uh, whatever Guru Chi or great master or, or even uh, Buddha already. How can you be? You know, you know that you don't have anything at all. You don't know anything about the inner world. And you're such a low level. I know some of you might want to help others. So exactly for that, we must do the right thing. If someone is hungry and thirsty, you can't just give them dirt. You must give them proper food and liquid to drink and medicine if you can. If you cannot give what's needed and might even harm by your ignorance, then it is a disaster for both. Because if you are a little higher level, even low third level, you would never claim yourself to be anything because you're still nowhere. Even if you see the Master come visit you in your home, you know, the manifestation, the light body of the Master comes, you're still nowhere yet. You're not even halfway through. Not to talk about if you go above the fifth level, or even at the fifth level, in order to master the power of saving others. And you still have to suffer, even then, because no matter how much power you acquire from your initiating master, you still don't have enough. Not for this world, no, no. That's why many masters initiate very small numbers of disciples. Many of them don't want to, because if you want to practice well for yourself, you do not try to interfere with others' karma, as then both will sink like a small boat that can't be overloaded. Because God gives the Master all the power, but the Master can share only, you know, some with each individual disciple. When I heard that some initiates claim that they are Maitreya Buddha, I said to God, Oh, please, can you give it to any of them? I was, you know, at that point, a little exhausted from karma, from all sides. God laughed and told me, No, <laughs> he will die immediately. He can't give you all the power. Number one, you will be dead. You can't bear it. Number two, the Master has to share with many disciples and save some for himself. And I told you at the moment, nobody, not one of my disciples or other people's disciples has reached that stage of complete enlightenment so that he can fulfill all the power from God and God will give him power to go out and initiate other people independently. No. So please, don't make a clown of yourself. <laughs> oh God, it's too cheap theater. It's a very degraded copy. And you, yourself, know it very well because you know nothing. You're too low. Otherwise, you wouldn't claim like that. Because you would know that to falsify God's gift is a heinous sin, resulting in relentless hell punishment. You're just talking with your ego, and the demons are cheating you, puffing you up so that you will be their instrument. And when you finish in this world, or when they don't want you, they will drag you down. Look at other so-called masters in front of you. Like, for example, the living Buddha boy. 
and rumor, whatever. Yeah, it's ruin, not rumor. So cheap, so ridiculous. Even I myself can't bear it. This is so sickening. This trang tam or rumor deliberately misinterpreted my old poem to claim successorship. And that guy, I don't want to reveal his name yet, added some new words, altered the sutra to claim Maitreya status. Then call himself a great master. He stole my teaching and gave half-baked initiation to trusting vulnerable people who don't have real blessing and visions as they should do from initiation. How dare they do such and claim such in the eyes of all the Buddhas in all the transparent universes? They must be demons themselves to be the anti-heavens, hell dwellers. When I reread the Kwangim uh, Sutra or Avatamsaka Sutra, there was no such thing in there. Xin đừng làm nhục bẩn nếu không gợi hạnh phúc. Xin đừng tạo đau thương.